Jerry, ready to go? Ready to go. Great. Actually, for, welcome, everybody. I'm just going to ask to put the slide down just for now while we're speaking, and we'll bring them right back up. I, I want to be able to see all of you a little better. So hello, everyone. I'm James Tangora. I'm the Department Head for Engineering Leadership in Society. And I'd like to welcome you to the first graduation of students in our department, which brings together construction management, systems engineering and engineering management, engineering technology, and peace engineering. So let me be the first tonight to congratulate our graduates and to express my gratitude to all the families and friends who supported our students throughout this journey. So a little over a year ago, Professor Fiore, Professor Olson, Professor Doe and I decided to merge our five programs into a single department so that collectively, collectively, we could graduate students who address the complex challenges of society and industry. Little did we know that our first year together would be one of the most challenging years the world has faced in generations and that the challenges would permeate everything our students did and how the students prepared themselves to face the world as leaders in engineering and in construction. Could not be prouder of the students for what they accomplished this year and for more importantly, for how they accomplished it. Despite the immense strain of a pandemic, contentious politics and immigration and work challenges that affected so many of our families, our students completed their very challenging degrees. They offered help when they saw fellow students struggle. They demonstrated grit when learning practical material that was delivered over Zoom and they showed immense kindness and patience to us faculty who were figuring things out as we went along. We are immensely impressed with you. I want you to know that we're a bit sad to see you leave, but we end this year very hopeful because we know that you are a next generation of technical leaders and that you will face new challenges with the same grace and resolve that you showed throughout this year. So for the remainder of the evening, we wanna celebrate your successes. Each of the program directors will be naming all of our graduates to give us a chance to recognize each of you and to reflect on your time with us at Drexel. So congratulations to all of you and please stay in touch. We will miss you. Professor Fiore. Thank you, Dr. Tangora. Welcome everyone. I am thrilled to be with you all tonight and thank you for all in joining us in this interesting scenario or in an interesting situation for graduation. Um, I am the program director for construction management and I will be presenting the graduates um, from our program, both the master students and the BS students. Um, but before we begin, I wanted to present some awards. Um, each year, our faculty get together and we deliberate over the senior class. Um, and it's outside of senior design. Um, it is um, awards that we give our students. We give typically three awards each year. And one is our outstanding senior, which is our top uh, GPA students, our top, top academic performer. Um, and our top academic performer performer for this year is, I don't know where I can't see you, is Michael Passarella. Congratulations, Michael. Um, you will, and all of our award, awardees, you will be getting a plaque. Um, and if the, when the slides come back up, you'll see a, an image of what your plaque will look like. Um, the next award um, was a little more contentious when I when I talk about how the faculty were going back and forth and attempting to decide um, on the students that would receive these two awards. And we couldn't kind of separate the awards, so we decided to give um, the award. We combined the award and we're giving it to two individual students. So our leadership award and serve leadership and service to the program award goes to Eric Kasparowitz and Katie Tiarks. So congratulations to both Eric and Katie. Um, and again, we will be mailing you your, your plaques um, that are officially uh, your, your awards. 
me. And so this is in recognition to the service and the leadership that you have shown throughout your five years at Drexel. Um, before I bring up Katie to do our graduation um, address to our students, I wanted to specifically call out every one of our seniors. I will announce your names later, but I have to say you are the first class uh, that entered um, after my, my during my first year as program director. So you're all very special to me as to, well as to all of our faculty. Um, so with that, hey, um, Eric and Katie and Michael, congratulations. Um, now I would like to bring up uh, Katie Tiarks, who will give us her address to the senior class and to the rest of the graduates. Katie. Thank you, Dr. Fiore, family, friends, faculty, and graduates. I'm honored to welcome you and to congratulate the class of 2021 for achieving this milestone. While I'm saddened that we are not in person to celebrate the end of our journey together, I am grateful for this opportunity to come together as a class one last time. I have a vivid memory from preschool of my teacher asking me, what do you wanna be when you grow up? And confidently telling her, I want to be a ballerina. While I think my four-year-old self may be rather surprised by my choice in career path, I think I'm much better suited for dirt and concrete than ballet flats. Many of us here have ended up on a different path than we originally anticipated, especially over the past year. But regardless of where life's ups and downs may have taken you, your strength, hard work, and tenacity have brought you to this moment. Now, I would be lying if I said I'm not happy that I'll never have to complete another discussion board post or homework assignment again, but I will miss my classmates and friends, the faculty, and the sense of community and the support the construction management program has brought us. I could go on and on about how proud I am to be part of this blooming program and how I've been inspired for the past five years by all of you, but I'll leave you with this. Up until this moment, whether in school or not, I'm sure we've all been challenged, felt overwhelming stress, found ourselves failing at times only just to get sucker punched before fighting our way out of the rut. While I wish I could say that graduating college means all of this will end, I'm sure we can all recognize this is just the beginning. But next time you're feeling this way, I challenge you to look back at this moment. You deserve to feel proud of your accomplishments. You have quite literally learned how to build skylines and horizons. And while we have a whole career ahead of us to continue to learn and grow, remember the roots and the program that helped shape you. In the wise words of David Allen Coe, it is not the beauty of the building you should look at. It is the construction of the foundation that will stand the test of time. So cheers to us and to all of the places that will outlast us and congratulations class of 2021. Yay. Thank you, Katie. Okay, so I will begin the presentation of our construction management graduates. I will begin with our 2021 MS uh, in construction management graduates. Now, these folks um, have done fantastic work and Unlike all of our undergraduates who were extremely affected, their education was affected by their um, by the pandemic. Our MS program is completely online, so you folks probably didn't skip a beat. Um, but it, at least in terms of of classes, the rest of your uh, rest of everything is pretty pretty challenging. I'm going to announce your name. Some of our graduate students were able to submit to us some pictures, um, so I will go through those. But our 2021 MS in Construction Management graduates are Alan Samuel Bueller Jarrett, Zachary Wang Kalilung, Emily Elizabeth Klaus, Dennis Custer, Gabriel F. Jasinski, James Alexander Jones, Eiler Krayethi, Carter Boyce Taylor Lane. Andre Mishari Yaakov, and John Lewis Shields. Congratulations.
Okay. So Alan Bueller Jarrett is from Mitchellville, Maryland, and he works for the US federal government. Um, and one of his fondest memories in the program was his um, fiance motivating him to pursue his master's degree. Um, Alan, I'm sure you made them proud. Um, Emily Klaus, she is from Manchester, New Jersey. She works with MC2 Experience, CMM Custom Homes. And a quote that she would like to share with you is to thine own self be true. Congratulations, Emily. James Jones, who is from McAllister, Oklahoma. Um, he is in the army and he's stuck in Italy for another year. Um, and his quote is, I can carry things. Illard Karyethi is from New York. He works for STV as a project manager. And his quote is, believe you can and you're halfway there. Okay, as you can see, we have several BS in construction management students and each of them have a slide. Mashari uh, Bala Al Harbi, he is from Saudi Arabia and one note, uh, Mashari is our first ever BS in construction management student from Saudi Arabia. Um, he will be working for Chevron and he has deep gratitude to his family professors and colleagues for making him a true dragon in construction mm -hmm. management. Uh, Sarah Andrade, she is from East Hanover, New Jersey. She will be working for Alan Myers as a field engineer in Delaware and Maryland. And her quote is, great things never came from comfort zones. Brendan Baxay from Berwyn, Pennsylvania. He will be working with RJB Contracting. And his quote is, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Tom Bell, he is from Penfield, New York. He'll be working in project management at the Herman Golder uh, company. And his quote is, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Next up, we have Jake Britton um, from Philadelphia, PA, and he will be working for Power Construction in Chicago. Uh, Brody Brush. Brody is from Ballot Pennsylvania, and he will be starting his own firm, Brush Construction Company. Very proud of you, Brody. Um, I'm a great believer in luck, and I find the harder I work, the more I have of it. Congratulations. Albert Ciardi, he is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He will be working with the CID group. His quote is, naturally, some days are harder than others, but I must try. Jason Four, Jason is from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and he is working as an estimator at Harkins Builders. And his quote is, all we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Alex Hewitt, Alex is from Springfield, Pennsylvania, and he is going to be working as a project engineer at Whiting Turner. And his fondest memory, so the students were able to put their fondest memory or a quote. His fondest memory was Dr. Beard's estimating midterm. Wonder if you're the only one, Alex. Eric Kasparowitz, he's from Philadelphia, and he'll be working with uh, Alan Myers. And Eric's memory is, my mindset was changed forever from the time that I told Professor Carney that my brain hurt after a long study session. And he replied, good, it's growing. Life is all about perspective. Chris Quaxa, Chris is from Livingston, New Jersey, and he'll be working for Intech Construction. And his fondest memory is participating in the ASC competition team and making Dr. Short cry tears of joy. I think all our competition teams always make us cry tears of joy. 
Connor Mayer. Uh, Connor is from Reading, Pennsylvania, um, and he is going to be working with Alan Myers. Um, his fondest memory is when I helped him change majors and change the course of his college career. And, uh, and, and Connor, Connor is a very young graduate. Darian Neary from Wildwood Crest, New Jersey. She will be working in the Philadelphia area. And her favorite memory is winning the heavy civil competition in Albany, New York. Tiane Nu is from Wuxi, China, and he will be attending Boston University um, next year in project management. Um, his quote is, I have to remind myself that some birds aren't meant to be caged. Their feathers are just too bright. Um, um. Michael Passarella, Michael's from Voorhees, New Jersey. He will be a, working at Turner Construction as a field engineer and pursuing graduate school. His quote is, wonder is the desire for knowledge. Stan, Sam Pastusen. Sam is from Westfield, New Jersey. He'll be working for Wilco Construction, a general contractor out of Jersey City. His best memory of CMGT was sitting in the same suite for seven hours at a time in class after he switched into CMGT. Good old room 179. Kylene Clothier Schnell is from Southampton, PA, and he will be also working with Alan Myers after graduation. And his fondest memory is the excitement of picking his first co-op. Yu Chen Chao. Yu Chen is from Hangzhou, China, and he will be working in his hometown back in China for a real estate development group, and then he will be pursuing graduate school in the following year. His quote is, there are no regrets in life, just lessons. Katie Tiarts, she is from Warren, New Jersey. She is a field engineer for Moriarty and Associates um, in DC. Um, some of her favorite memories come from team bonding after presenting at the ASC competitions. I think all of us that are that, that work on these competitions understand the bonding that takes place. John Valerio is from Hamilton, New Jersey. Um, he will be working for Mount Construction. And while John didn't put any memories or quotes, I, I will always remember John when he came to me and said that his his wife would be expecting midway through the term, and she was expecting twin boys. So John and uh, and others that have had children during our during our program, I highly respect you. So congratulations, John. Next, and last but not least, Tim Vitello. Uh, Tim is from Swarthmore, PA. He will also be working with Alan Myers, um, and hopefully he's here today and not out mowing lawns. Congratulations. Um, congratulations to all of our students from the CMGT faculty, myself, Dr. Cook, Dr. Short, Professor Casali, Dr. Beard, and Ms. Jessica Cruz. We are all so proud of you and congratulations. We're really going to miss you. The faculty put together a little video for you all. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Of course, as Jerry Seinfeld says, sometimes the road less traveled by is less traveled by for a reason. So let's take the advice of that great American philosopher, Yogi Berra, who said, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Drexel was a fork in the road that you successfully took. Now, whenever a fork comes, make a choice and then make that choice the best choice you could have made. Congratulations, and continue to enjoy the rest of the journey. Congratulations, seniors. You have put so much hard work into the past five years, and you should be very proud. It's been my pleasure getting to know many of you, and I wish you all the best in your future careers. Just remember, being a graduate doesn't mean you know everything. 
but you are better prepared to learn what life has in store for you. Congratulations to our most recent instruction management graduates. We are all so proud of you and know that you're going to make a great contribution to our industry and do amazing things. I've been privileged to have known you these past few years and watch you grow professionally. We hope that you will keep in touch with us and hopefully come back and share your experiences with students who are now where you once were. I'm going to miss you all. Please don't forget about us because we won't forget about you. And best of luck to all of you. Congratulations, class of 2021. It has been a challenging year, but you persevered and did it. We are proud of your accomplishments and wish you the best in your careers. You are now forever dragons. Congratulations. Hey, graduates, I just want to say congratulations to you. Best wishes for your future. Go dragons. Congratulations, class of 2021. It certainly has been an interesting year, but you have risen to the occasion and accepted the challenge and impressed each and every one of us faculty members. We are extremely proud of your accomplishments and we wish you all the best as you move forward in your careers. We also hope you don't forget about us and come back to visit us as often as you can. We look forward to seeing where you progress and how you progress in your careers and wish you all the best as you move forward. Congratulations. To all the construction okay. management students, congratulations. All right, it's systems engineering and engineering management students. So. Uh, from me, uh, you all know who I am, and so my sincere congratulations, and on also behalf of our faculty, uh, congratulations to the students that are graduating here within the department as well. So I, I certainly want to um, take note of our top graduate award, and this student comes to mind, and when I think about this student, sometimes I wonder, I'm not sure how he did it, with a family, with newborns, with a full-time job, but yet this student has managed to graduate with 4.0 in both degree programs, systems engineering and engineering management. management. So on behalf of our program, the, that top graduate award goes to Kelly Bashan, and he will also be speaking as well as our graduate speaker. So our two graduate speakers today are Lenora Jackson, whose speech is titled, The Road Less Traveled. Obviously, we just saw Charlie Cook's video on the road less travel, and so she'll elaborate, elaborate on her road less travel. And then Kelly Bashan, whose speech, four, kid, four moves, three kids, two master degree, and one flexible program. And you'll get to understand why the title is fittingly in his case. And these are their quotes um, for their time at Drexel. All right. So without further ado, I will turn it over to, I'll go with Lenore Jackson first, Lynn. Yes. Good evening, Drexel University, faculty, family, friends, and fellow graduates. As you heard in the video, Robert Frost said, Two roads diverge in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. It is an honor to stand before you today to share my story of the road less traveled. I'm the legacy of two first-generational college students who were determined to pave the road for me. Though they left a few stones unturned, they imparted strength in me to overcome. In 1968, after serving in the Air Force, my dad was determined to be the first member of his family to get a college degree. He will walk 20 miles from his grandparents' farm to Bowie State University to earn two bachelor's degrees, one in mathematics and the other in social studies. Working as, at a, as a security guard at night and eventually being blessed with a car, he continued his education and received a master's of education and administration. He, like many of you, knew the odds were stacked against him, 
but was determined to create his own career path. In a similar manner, my mom also created her own career path when she, after battling my senior gravis and proving the doctors wrong by birthing three beautiful girls, decided to be a first generation college student in 1997 when my oldest sister was headed to college. She was not only a wife, but a mother of three and deemed disabled because of her medical condition. But she overcame and not only received a bachelor's degree, but went all the way to receive her doctorate of divinity. I stand here because I stand on their shoulders and I could not have done this without Reverend Norris Jones and Dr. Linda Jones. You see, for me, the road less traveled was not a road that wasn't traveled, but a road that few had walked. I began at Drexel University in 2002 as a Pell Grant student. PDEC was tough, but I graduated in 2007 for the Bachelor's of Science degree in Architectural Engineering. I started as a project engineer for a construction company and then later followed my passion to become a teacher. Getting a degree from Drexel University really gave me the strength and know-how how to choose my own career path. I took a break from teaching and worked in business development for a large construction firm and then returned to education as an assistant principal and eventually a deputy director of extended learning programs. The most recent stop on my road to success has been a project manager for a real estate firm and a director of operations for a transportation company. I did not know what I was getting myself into. And so that's why I decided to come back to Drexel and get a master's in engineering management. And it has really prepared me for these roles. Having come back 12 years later to get my master's, I will be honest and say, I really should have done the MSDS program when I was an undergrad. <laughs> But our journey and our pathways to our future are not always perfect. I thank God for the strength, wisdom, and courage to return to school and pursue this master's degree. You see, for me, diversity has not been my weakness, but a strength that has broadened my experience, which allowed me to pursue this engineering management degree, which has prepared me for this next chapter in my life. When I say diversity is not my, when I say diversity, it's not my gender or my race. As we learned in Engineering Management 581, diversity has four levels. And my diversity includes not just my race and gender, but my faith, my values, my work and life experience. Yes, I am a black woman and that's the me you see. You can't put black face on to mimic me because through my journey, I am more than a black face. I am a Christian, a preacher, a construction manager, a teacher, a business developer, a real estate developer, a project manager, a wife, a daughter, and soon to be a mother. I am the dream of those that came before me. I am the dream of my parents, and I am me unapologetically. The road we take in life can be determined with decisions that are in our control and decisions that life makes for us that feel out of our control. Even from the day I started this master's program, I remembered, I, I realized I was on the road less traveled. When you embark on a journey and realize the road you chose is not paved, but a rough terrain, you have to make a decision. Do I walk the unpaved road and create my own career path, or do I find an easier path that has already been paved? Some of us spend years trying to find the easier path and realize that with the time we've wasted, we're still at our starting point. But for the rest of us that choose the road that is muddy with trees and boulders blocking the path, we must look at our obstacles as opportunities and go as far as we can. And when we feel like we can't go further, keep going. We all have a story, a unique place in the family that we come from. I'm reminded of a poem by Lucille Clifton, an African-American female poet who was a two-time finalist for the Pulitzer Prize. Won't you celebrate with me? Won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into? A kind of life I had no model, Born in Babylon, both non-white and woman. What did I see except myself? I made it up. Here on this bridge between starshine and clay, my one hand holding tight my other hand. Come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. Yes, my journey to this master's degree was tough. I had two miscarriages. I left my job. I got COVID-19 and I lost my dad. But thanks to God, the support of my family, 
the support of my Drexel classmates, and the support of my Drexel professors, I kept going. When my dad passed away, I received an email from a professor that encouraged me to finish. I told him I didn't want to finish summer term and that I wasn't sure if I was going to ever return to classes. And he said, take some time to heal, but don't give up. You see, the road less traveled is a road that is filled with heartache, depression, and true uncertainty. But take it from me. It's not worth getting up. Keep going. You find not only you will make it, but you will make a difference in the career path that you choose. So the next time you're on an interview for a new job or in your boss's office looking for a promotion or making that decision to start your own company, have confidence to know that you may not check all their boxes for qualification, but the road less traveled has prepared you to live beyond the boxes and bring the qualities that every dynamic leader should possess. Strength, determination, intelligence, and of course, a Drexel degree. Congratulations, class of 2021. Thanks, Lynn. Uh, very inspiring speech. Uh, certainly, you took the road less travel. All right, Kelly, do you want to give your speech? All right. Can you hear me all right? We can. All right, very good. Well, we did it. We've done it. We're here. We finally made it. But what did we do? Uh, we studied a lot. We read and read and read some more. We wrote a plethora of papers and discussion posts, and we completed several group projects. We placed a priority on learning daily as opposed to stagnating gradually. It is amazing that we accomplished all that we did. Congratulations to you, to me, to all of us. Now, it wouldn't be right for us to take all the credit for these accomplishments. Let's make sure to say thank you and mean it, especially to those that helped us so much. To Drexel's faculty and advisors, we appreciate that you crafted an excellent curriculum and challenged us to increase understanding of ourselves and others. To my fellow graduates, I appreciate you, especially those of you that were highly engaged while we worked together. You know who you are. To my employer, I work for Aerojet Rocketdyne, a rocket company. And like many of you, I was, uh, I was benefited by a generous tuition assistance program where my employer invested in me as an individual. To our parents, family, and friends, you supported us. You put up with, with us at times. You encouraged us. And you were excited with us along the way. We won't be spending our evenings and weekends doing schoolwork anymore. So we look forward to spending more time with you. To my wife and children. My lovely wife is a full-time mom to our three beautiful children which means that she works way harder than I do. Sometimes I was away for a full day at work and then would come home in the evening and need to spend all that time doing schoolwork. I couldn't have done this without you, Valerie. Thank you for being the best teammate. To God, I thank God for the opportunities and the motivation that he gave me. I have a strong conviction that whatever I do, I should work diligently at it as if I'm working for God. All right, I had to say that first because it is vitally important that we sincerely thank others. Hi, I'm Kelly Bichon, and I titled my speech, Four Moves, Three Kids, Two Master's Degrees, One Flexible Program. Four Moves. I've been able to complete all my studies through Drexel without ever stepping foot on Drexel's campus. My work has moved me from Washington to California, back to Washington, and now to Alabama. I completed all of these moves during classes, usually within the first few weeks of the quarter. My teachers at Drexel have worked with me. And I've been impressed by their helpfulness and the flexibility of the program. If you're wondering, I'll be moving again in two months to Arkansas this time. Three kids. After, about a year after I started at Drexel and just three weeks into the quarter, my son Charles was born. He was born early and we spent several weeks in the hospital with him while he learned to breathe on his own. That was a tough season. About two years later, it felt like deja vu when my daughter Felicity was born. She was also born early, and we spent almost two weeks in the hospital with her. Now this last fall, my daughter Stella was born, and she was perfectly healthy. What a blessing. In all these situations, I learned and I grew while my family experienced new and different challenges. My teachers never abandoned me, 
And nor did they make me feel bad about wanting to prioritize my family in those moments. Again, the flexibility of this program and the kindness of the faculty were on display. Now that I'm done, I'm looking forward to spending much more time with my wonderful family. Perhaps I'll coach my son's baseball team. And I bet the dance recitals will be coming soon for my daughters. To my children, Charles, Felicity, and Stella, I love you so much. Two master's degrees. Over five years ago, I had picked Drexel because they boasted the premier engineering management program in the nation. At the time, I was working as an electrical engineer designing circuits for spacecraft electric propulsion. But I used the things I was learning at Drexel to ask for more responsibility, and I soon got promoted to an engineering lead role. When I realized that job was really a systems engineering job, and then I knew next to nothing about systems engineering, I began taking systems engineering classes for my electives. After a few classes, I was hooked, and I decided to add on a second master's degree. After all, it's sort of like buy one, get one free, right? Or sorry, buy one, get one half off. Uh, Drexel's flexibility allowed me to benefit from the synergy of both programs without adding any redundant classes. One flexible program. I completed the MS System Engineering and the MS Engineering Management over five plus years while working full time, while starting a family, and while completing challenging work assignments that required both travel and relocation. I took one class at a time so that I could balance life and focus on truly learning the material. That is how I was able to maintain a 4.0 in every class for both degrees. The flexibility of Drexel, of the faculty, and this program was amazing. Well, now that we're done, we're instantly better at everything. It will be immediately promoted, right? Well, not quite. Um, we've been learning and growing through the whole program. But since I began my studies at Drexel, I've been seeking how to apply my new learning at work. And I've consistently found exciting ways to add more value to my teams. My employers noticed, and they have let me take on increased responsibility, and they have promoted me five times since I began this program. I won't get a pay raise automatically now that I'm done, but my pay has increased 75% while I've been learning at Drexel. As you demonstrate your knowledge in helpful ways, and as you market your new skills, I expect you will be rewarded. I hope that I've encouraged you and that you too will find ways to make incremental improvements within your realm of influence. Let's each work to make this world a little bit better by treating others how we wanna be treated and by always seeking out ways that we can help. I'll leave you with this. Be dragons, be excellent to each other and be blessed. Thanks Kelly, very good speech. And and so for you full-time students out there, you, you all thought you had it easy, huh? Four moves, three kids, two master's degree. My goodness, some of us would have quit long time ago. Um, now you understand why I had to have these two students uh, give their speech, because certainly very ins inspirational and they went through a lot and they made it through and that speaks well of the, their character. Good job, students. All right, so a couple of quotes from a few of our students. Um, for Stephen DeLucre, his quote, I'm hoping to bring a systems engineering perspective to local organizing work. From Sierra Harris, another um, wonderful student who did a lot. Blessed is she who believed that the Lord's promises would be fulfilled to her. Thank you, Drexel. I'll be working as a program manager at a nonprofit uh, in Wilmington, Delaware. For J.L. Gasper, he quotes, the impossible is possible as long as you have the right mindset, which is always that hard work pays off. So true. By Valerie Stevens, it is up to you to decide what you want out of life and what you want to give. For Ronella Rod Rodney, if you surrender to the wind, you can ride it. Good job, students. All right, so since the pandemic, we did not have graduation last year. I'll just give a notable mention to all our graduates since last summer, all the way up to the present time and even the summer uh, uh, term 2021, all right? So for the summer 2020, these are our graduates. For the fall 2020, these are our graduates. 
and winter. I mentioned about uh, uh, Sierra and her accomplishments. And in spring. Michael, you're not showing any slides. I can see the I'm slides. Sure. I can see them. I can see them too. I can see them. Yeah, they're showing. Sorry. All right, in summer. And last but not least, on behalf of our systems engineering and engineering management uh, faculty, a, a hearty congratulations to all students. And I, I'll I, I yield the floor to some of our faculty who want to speak. Yes, I'll be more than happy to speak. Um, bear with me one minute. All right, I want to congratulate all of you on your achievement of earning a degree from Drexel. And I, and I wish all of you the best and great success as you venture forward in the next chapter of your life. For me personally, I, I'm going to miss many of you. I got to know so many of you personally, and it's been a great experience uh, teaching you and, and, uh, and helping you through and, and uh, being flexible with you because we, we know all of you worked full time and had family obligations. And it was a pleasure, this class. From this day on, you'll forever be a part of our Drexel family. And I know that from experience, as I was in the same shoes that you are, as I graduated from Drexel many years ago, but we won't talk about that. I'll just say it was in the last century. So keep in touch, reach back to us for whatever we can do to help you going forward. You're part of our family now. And who knows, maybe in the later stages of your career, You'll, uh, you'll come back and you'll teach for us. And there's nothing like going full circle. So best wishes, class of 2021. I wish you all the best. Great success. It was a pleasure teaching you. All right. Any other systems engineering and engineering management faculty want to speak? Yeah, I'd just like to add, this is uh, Carlo. Um, congratulations. I know you probably heard that so many times, but uh, sincere congratulations. It's a lot of hard work. Always remember, uh, when I was an undergrad, I had a professor that um, his sayings always stuck with me. And he would say, no matter what problem he was asked, or we would ask him during class, we're engineers, we're made to solve problems. And he would start off with that no matter what question was raised to him or what obstacle was put in his path. Overcoming this year's obstacles with the pandemic, on top of all the challenges to get to graduation, always hold it in your heart that you have the character to solve problems. And that's always something that you can reach down inside for. So congratulations, be proud, of what you've accomplished and enjoy the moment. All right, thanks, Carl. Any so, other faculty? Michael, yeah, I'd like to say, uh, so this is Kevin Gazzara. I teach the uh, systems thinking for leaders. Uh, and I've been fortunate enough to have some of the students that are graduating today. I wanna say congratulations to them. I've been teaching at over the last 25 years at six different universities and being a Drexel graduate like Rick from a previous century and and I even graduated even before Rick although I think I have a little bit more hair what I would say is that as a leader don't ever forget the value and your not and the knowledge that you have share that because you may not think that you know enough but I will tell you, you know more and have more knowledge and, and hands-on experience than any of the other universities I teach at. And it is your job as a leader to share and help others so that they become great leaders as well. So congratulations. It's truly been a pleasure. Uh, and I wish you the best for the upcoming years. All right, any other faculty from systems engineering, engineering management?
All right, engineering technology. Hello, everyone. And for the engineering technology students who are graduating today with the Bachelor's of Science degree, there is one thing I want to say. Congratulations, young Jedis. You are Jedi masters now. This is a list of our Bachelor's of Science of Engineering and Technology students. And I will go down the list uh, of everybody who had submitted um, some slides to me. Not everybody's here today, unfortunately, but it's good to see everybody's names. We have two students who are graduating this year with Masters of Engineering, um, after Masters of Science in Engineering and Technology, Cornelius Wago and Matthew Riley. Congratulations. So I, um, this is a very emotional day for me as um, I remember all of you and when you came to us, some came uh, straight fresh out of high school with uh, confidence and know-it-all attitude. Uh, some of you, some of you had your, you know, doubts and and worries. Um, some of you came from other colleges and switched to us from different majors. But it didn't take long for me to see how all of you are starting to get together and seeing you in the classrooms, working on your assignments, supporting each other and helping each other. Or passing by your classrooms and seeing you sitting in the class and playing games on your phones. That happens too. Some of you have created an amazing relationship with your peers we have this year uh, the three musketeers graduating, and you guys know who you are, Dana, Grandin, and Daniel, always together. I'm sure that your relationships and friendships is gonna last your lifetime. This is great to see. I will miss you guys popping your heads into my office to say hi after a break. And sometimes just in between classes, just to say hi and chat for 15 minutes. I have seen you guys grow, not only in your academic career, and even though we are very proud of your academic accomplishments, I think we are more, most proud of the men and women you have become over the last five years. I am really thankful for you allowing us to be part of your journey. So Cornelius, I saw you earlier on, on the Zoom and since I've never met you before, I'm so excited to see your face. This is great. Um, I wanna tell you that I'm definitely gonna miss sending you emails. And so if you think of me once in a while, just shoot me an email. I'll be happy to answer it. Sure, thank you. Starford, you always put a smile on my face. You have such lightness and positive energy around you. Keep it going. Yeah! Ben! <laughs> we had so many deep conversations. I am so excited that we were able to learn together. And you know what? Maybe a psychology degree is in your future. Congratulations. I did it. <laughs> Thank you. Sebastian, 
you always knew who you are. You always knew and had a clear vision how to get to your goals. I have a lot of admiration for you. And I expect once you are ahead of a big engineering company to start hiring some of the ET students. Definitely, Roger. Thank you so much. <laughs> Anthony, your calm demeanor has always helped all of us stay grounded. And I thank you for that. Kai, you are the first graduate with a computer engineering technology concentration. And as always being the first has, is not always easy, but you always stayed on top of your game and you keep pushing. And I'm very proud that you're here today. First, in com computer engineering technology. Congratulations. Congratulations, Kai. Daniel. Your positive attitude on life over the years has been a breath of fresh air. Stay true to yourself, always. I want to thank your mom for sending this beautiful collage. Thank you, mom. Uh, do I need to say anything? Look at that smile. It's contagious. Yeah, some technical difficulties. Oh, look, hi, look. You have always been such a gentleman and it's always been a pleasure to be around you. Thank you. Edgar, I know you're going for a master's degree and I can wait to see where life takes you. You always bring such peace everywhere you go and you help all of your peers release and ease their stress every time you're around. You rock. Thank you. Dana, you are my example of creativity. Every time I have to talk to prospective students and tell them um, how much you can do and what you can do with engineering technology, I always give you as an example of how you have managed to um, combine your major and minor to fit that to your to your you know career goals, and I. I don't know, maybe uh, there's some Oscars in your future, who knows?
Manya, you're my girl. I love you. I love you. Keep smiling. It doesn't matter what life brings you. Gee, you bring so much maturity and experience to the classroom. You're a natural leader and students follow. I want to thank you so much for leading our engineering technology students um, association and uh, bringing some excitement. Mix it up with some classes. Thank you. Nick, so much determination, so much determination. Never give up, keep moving forward. And remember guys, we all have a different path and we all have a different ways to get where we need to be. And knowledge is never wasted. We all have a purpose, keep dreaming, Keep moving forward, shine your light, believe in yourself. You did it. You did it not only in this crazy environment, you did it despite personal and financial hardships. You did it in a global pandemic. You guys are unstoppable. Congratulations. All right, Peace Engineering. Okay, hi everyone. Peace Engineering is our newest degree program in the department. And in, in addition to Sierra Harris earned um, graduate certificate, we would also like to celebrate two students who have earned master's degrees in Peace Engineering. The first is Kayla Yarnell, um, who has earned her MS degree. She shares with us that Peace Engineering has allowed her to find her passions of partnering with communities to find sustainable solutions to their environmental issues. Um, the next is Erin Lutz. Aaron also did, uh, earned his MS degree in peace engineering. And his quote is that it is the job that's never started that takes the longest to finish. And I am happy to say that both of these students, both Aaron and Kayla are staying with us for a PhD. So we don't have to say goodbye yet. So congratulations to Kayla and to Aaron. So with that, I think this concludes our celebration. Um, graduates, we salute you, we congratulate you, we hope you keep in touch, we wish you all the very best. Um, as we're logging off, we invite you to turn on your microphones, turn on your cameras, congratulate each other. It has been a pleasure um, getting to know all of you and supporting you through your journey. We're very proud of you. Congratulations. 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 Well done. If there's any CMGT students still on, we're going to come up with a meeting place for Friday. We're going to do a mini tailgate. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> Everyone else, construction your email. Is, is cooking for everybody. Pay attention. <laughs> 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 Goodbye, everyone. Congratulations. Enjoy the rest of the week. And we are proud of you and we'll, we will miss you. Bye-bye. Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> Chris, let me know where you're heading to. Yeah. I'll okay. let everybody know. Excellent. I missed you guys and I'm going to miss you guys. Yeah. We miss you, Chris. Welcome back. Congratulations, everybody. Congrats, everybody. everyone. Congrats, everyone. Now you all start to get the alumni newsletters like I do. <laughs> and Rick does. It doesn't everybody take else long. Is